Okay, hello again. Well, I started stripping this uh, Boost Cries down to see um, how it was made and see what might be wrong with it. And uh, the first thing I noticed, um, besides the uh, stainless steel uh, sockets, is that um, the variable capacitor has not been properly shorted out in order to provide the full capacitance. If you want to use this tuner on uh, the lower bands, 80 meters, uh, maybe even 40, um, you will have to short out the uh, two tabs on either side of the variable capacitor in order to give you the full 205 picofarads in total. It's there in the instructions. And uh, the middle tab is, of course, the rotator. Um, so that was one thing that I noticed. Um, of course, I've now got this large main toroid out and I've separated it from the switch. Having a look at the switch, um, you notice the solders, uh, there's, uh, it's, um, there's quite a lot of solder on there. It's not too easy to see what's going on. Um, yeah, it's a bit messy. And again, it looks like we're almost bridging, not quite, but we've almost got a bridge there. Um, on some of these tabs. I think it's just evidence again that this was uh, whoever made this attempted to assemble it actually in the housing rather than outside of the housing and then fit it in. So um, yeah that's all going to need uh, cleaning up and desoldering somehow. Had a look at the, uh, the inductance toroid here. Uh, this isn't actually all that bad. I haven't uh, counted the windings yet. Um, but they should be okay. I noticed they're a little loose here. Um, there is um, a good way to wind toroids nice and tight and we're going to look at that later in the video and uh, I noticed the tap here is a little loose on the winding um, but all in all that could be w worse. Um, I think just rewinding these first few uh, we're going to be able to reuse this so I might actually not need to rewind this although I might need to extend this wire because the way I make it it's going to have to come right over here to the other side and I'm not sure it will reach the switch so we'll see what happens. Um, but that's not too bad the inductance winding. When we get to the coupling winding things get a bit different well it doesn't look too bad there of course there's glue all over it um, which isn't actually necessary if it's wound properly and like I say we're going to look at uh, a way to wind this but again looking at the switch it's very hard to see what's going on there and we've got a loose connector I can pull that off with my fingers yeah this is uh, again all evidence that it's been uh, constructed in the housing and not outside of the housing. So um, this is going to have to be totally remade. So we're going to snip all that off now and clean it up. Off here, going to go through all these. Get the switch off. There we go. You can see we've got our taps on the coil. They've all been nicely insulated. There's no, there's no actual need to insulate them. Um, the uh, coating on the, uh, the the enamel coating should be enough, providing you're careful and you don't damage it. But um, yeah, we're gonna remove all of this now, snip through those windings and remake it because uh, this is actually the winding that gives most people quite a lot of trouble. Um, so it's gonna be very useful to us to actually look at this winding and uh, see if we can't improve it, see if we can't find a way to uh, make it easier for us to do. So I'll just clip all this off. There we go. Have a look at the toroid. It's not too bad. It doesn't look damaged in any way. So there we go. That's our coupling toroid, all ready, all ready to be rewound in the next video. So that's about it for the um, dissection of this kit. Um, yeah, and we did see a few of the uh, common mistakes that uh, first-time builders often make when uh, starting out with the boost cries. So stay tuned for the next video and. Uh, where we'll be looking at uh, preparing the toroids and uh, particularly winding that coupling toroid.
that's all for now. See you later.